Rent prices are showing signs of cooling. A book ban gets blocked and a high stakes situation for the U.S. and the World Cup. That's some of what we'll get to on The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Jeff Pierre. It's Monday, July 31st. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. First up, an attack on a city in southern Ukraine has left at least four people dead. Officials said this morning that Russian missiles struck Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's hometown. At least 43 people were injured. The strikes came a day after Russian officials accused Ukraine of drone attacks in Moscow and Crimea. In Moscow, local authorities said two office towers were damaged, but there were no reports of casualties. In Crimea, which Russia seized from Ukraine in 2014, Russian officials claimed to have taken down 25 drones. Ukraine hasn't said whether it was responsible, but Zelensky said that attacks inside the Russian border are fair and inevitable. Number two, an aide to Donald Trump is expected to appear in court today. Carlos de Oliveira has worked at the former president's Florida home for more than a decade. He's the second person to be charged alongside Trump over the alleged hoarding and hiding of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. De Oliveira has been charged with four crimes. They include one count of making false statements and representations when he denied to the FBI any involvement in or knowledge of the moving of boxes at Mar-a-Lago that contain classified material. He's expected to plead not guilty. Number three, at least 40 people were killed in a bombing in Pakistan yesterday. A suspected suicide bomber targeted the conference of a right-wing political and religious party in the country's northwest. Nearly 200 people were injured. The attack is part of a worrying trend. There's been a resurgence of terror attacks in Pakistan ahead of the general election this year. No group has claimed responsibility yet for this latest incident. Number four, a law in Arkansas against providing harmful books to children has been blocked. The law would have made it a crime for librarians and booksellers to give minors materials deemed harmful to them. It was set to take effect tomorrow and would have punished people with up to a year in prison. But on Saturday, a federal judge sided with bookstores and libraries. They argued in a lawsuit that parts of the law were unconstitutional. The judge agreed with them that the state's definition of harmful materials was overly vague. The ruling could potentially have a wider impact. At least seven states have passed similar laws in recent years. Some good news for renters. The rent hikes of the past few years are officially slowing down. That's number five. Monthly rent shot up by 15% between 2020 and 2022, the fastest increase in almost a century. But new housing construction and lower demand has helped slow things down. New data shows that rent is now growing between 1% and 3% per year. That's about what it was before rent skyrocketed during the pandemic. You can check how prices are changing in your area with the tracker on our website. Number six, the U.S. will play Portugal at the Women's World Cup overnight. Things aren't turning out the way the defending champions expected at the World Cup. The team faces a tricky path to the tournament's next stage after beating Vietnam and tying with the Netherlands. The U.S. needs to beat Portugal or tie with them to advance to the knockout stage, but a loss would probably mean they're out. It would be their earliest World Cup exit ever. Megan Rapinoe spoke about what the moment means for her and the team. I think for me, I'm like excited. Like you have a a must, you know, a must perform sort of like must win type of game. I mean, I'm sure we could tie. I don't know all the scenarios. You guys know that. But it's like a pressure moment. And that's what the tournament is now. Every single game from here on out is that pressure moment. And like that's the best part of being at the World Cup. So if you want to watch, you better set your alarm clock. The match starts at 3 a.m. Eastern on Fox and Telemundo.
And at number seven, scientists discovered how to induce virgin birth in fruit flies. It's called parthenogenesis, the ability to reproduce without a mate. Only a small minority of animals can pull this off. But for the first time, scientists figured out how to manipulate the genes of fruit flies to induce virgin birth. It's a handy skill for a fly to have. In the absence of males, female flies were able to have babies to keep the species alive. And their babies were able to reproduce asexually too, passing down the trick through generations. This discovery matters for humans. Modern farming methods like planting homogenous crops and using pesticides could create the conditions for different pests to reproduce this way. And that could be bad news for our food supply. That's the show for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Jeff Pierre, and I'll meet you back here tomorrow.